If you look good, you play good. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter our promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. College football is so close, and I apologize about my voice. I'm a little bit sick today, but I still want to get this episode out. But like I was saying, the college football season is just around the corner. This weekend is week zero. Teams like Notre Dame and USC play. Notre Dame plays Navy, and USC has a game. So there's a ton of matchups this weekend. But, of course, the Maryland Terrapins don't play until a couple of weeks when we play Towson. But the season is coming super fast. Um, I can't wait for it to get here. I can't wait to start talking about actual gameplay instead of just continuously previewing about the season. But Maryland brought out a really cool thing yesterday. In case you guys missed it, they released a top five jersey in all of college football yesterday. Yes, I'm going to tell you it's one of the best jerseys in all of college football. The jerseys are all black, black helmet, black shorts, black top. And then it has that kind of classic look with the white and gold red stripes. And it has white numbers with an outline of red in a classic look. And it's just got a new feel and it's super nice. It's definitely the best uniform in the Big Ten. It's obviously up to opinion, but in my opinion, it's the best uniform in the Big Ten and maybe all of college football. I just love a black outlook. Whenever you see jerseys, I think black on black is my favorite kind of color. And I think it goes well um, for the Maryland Terrapins, especially with the black helmet. I hadn't really seen a black helmet like that before um, for Maryland. So having that black helmet with the black jersey is really nice. And, you know, we have the Under Armour connection. Um, we always have some of the best jerseys in college football with all of the um, different mixes and different things that we do um, with the Under Armour connection. But it is definitely one of my favorite jerseys in college football. I think you could argue Maryland has the best jerseys in all of college football in terms of just the different combinations that we have. Um, you could argue that Oregon is one probably with the Nike connection, but I could argue Maryland at two um, or very high up. It's all opinion based, but I love these new blackout jerseys. But these blackout jerseys are coming out and debuting, debuting against Virginia. Um, it's our third game of the season. We play Towson and Charlotte before them. I like to say UVA is our first real test of the season um, because it's the per- first Power Five team we play. Um, ACC, we used to be in the ACC. We used to play them every year, had a little bit of a rivalry with them at times. But like I said, it's our first real test. We should absolutely be 2-0 and going into that game. There's no reason we shouldn't be. There's no reason we won't be. And I have total confidence that we'll beat Charlotte and Towson by a good amount of points. Um, different players should get in in those games. We should – those our starters should be rested, like honestly, a good bet. Obviously, they're gonna play, but they're I don't see them playing the whole game. And with how Coach Lossy likes to rotate players in and out, the starters are um going to be fresh and the backups are gonna play a lot. And it is gonna give us a chance to see some of the freshmen and sophomores that haven't played a ton yet. Um, but of course also see our impact players. So that's why I kind of um love the early season games that aren't always the best games and Maybe your normal viewer doesn't like watching them, but I like to see where our freshmen are at that were highly recruited or a guy like Raymond Brown is at if he gets more carries, he's sophomore running back or our backup quarterback, Billy Edwards. I want to see how he throws. So I like, or like a guy like Shalik Knott, um, um, a four-star wide receiver who was a freshman last year. I like to see how those guys have progressed early on in the season. That's why I kind of like those games, but that's the, Besides the point, the black jerseys are coming out against Virginia. It's supposed to be a blackout game. We're going to be 2-0 going into that game. I expect 
um, the shell to be packed with um, people. I expect the Virginia fans to travel because Virginia isn't that far. Um, of course, um, just being a state down. So I expect the Virginia fans to travel up to Maryland too. So I expect the, there to be a good amount of Virginia fans there. Um, so it should draw a big crowd. And of course the Maryland fans should show up for that game. And I've been saying this a good amount, but I really do believe this. I think the Virginia game is one of the most important games of the season. You could say playing an Ohio State. You could say playing a Penn State. You could say playing a Michigan. But in terms of the out-of-conference, it's by far our most important game. But even in terms of just our whole schedule, I think it's one of our more important games. Because I've been saying this, we compete with Virginia for recruits. Like I said, Virginia fans are going to travel up to Maryland because it's not that far. I'm not saying it's like 30 minutes away. It's it's a couple hours down the road, but that's really not a big difference in recruiting. So we compete with guys, um, with the Virginia guys for um, recruits um, in terms of in the state of Virginia. And we went heavy in the state of Virginia in the 2024 class. Um, a guy like Makai White forced our wide receiver from Virginia. Of course, we beat out other schools like Michigan and there's Georgia, Virginia Tech for him. Virginia Tech's another one. We don't play them, but that's another school we can beat heavy with for recruiting. Um, but we beat out Virginia for Makai White, and he's an in-state guy for Virginia. So, you know, he definitely has a connection there being from that state. And But Makai White isn't the only guy we beat out for um, in Virginia. Christian Martin actually, I think, was more heavily – considering Virginia then Makai White and Christian Martin is our QB commit in 2024 class. He's also from Virginia. So, and he was considering Virginia. So if we want to stay on top of the recruiting in the DMV area, um, we're going to have to continue to be a better program than Virginia because the better programs get better recruits. And if we're winning more against a team like Virginia, then we're going to get more of the DMV recruits because Virginia also likes to go into Maryland for recruits because it's not that far away. I'm sure if we looked at the Virginia um, classes throughout the years, they have a ton of Maryland players just like we do. So it's really important to me and to the program that we beat out Virginia because, and I was also looking at, I want to make this point. I was looking at the ESPN 300 for um, the 2025 class. And there was nine Virginia players in the top 350 players in the class. So what does that mean? It means that if we want to get some of those guys in the DMV area that are closer to us, um, we're going to have to beat out Virginia. So winning that game, winning that game handily could be really important. But we do have a better team this year. Um, I'm pretty sure we're the favorite, especially being home. So I totally expect us to beat them. They're bringing in a new quarterback. Um, he's a transfer from a smaller school. Um, and, of course, we have Talia. So if you just look at the quarterback positions, um, we definitely have upper hand. But when we get closer to the Virginia game, of course, we'll do a preview of them. And um, we'll get more in depth about that game later on. But it is the most important game on the schedule or one of the most important games on the schedule, in my opinion. Seven Terps just got put on a very important watch list. We'll talk about it after this ad from Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs makes you look good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dogs fix this issue by embedding cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter promo code locked on college for a free white tie cat with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on or promo code locked on college for a free white tie cat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you my order for bird dogs just came in. I got some really nice pants and a really nice pair of shorts. Um, they do a really good job. So make sure you guys go check them out. Seven Terps just got put on the 2024 Senior Bowl watch list. I think this is really important, and I'm going to tell you why. 
Um, if you don't know the Senior Bowl, it's pretty much an event that is a pre-draft kind of event. Um, and the top seniors across the country all get invited to the Senior Bowl, and they go and compete in, like, different drills. They play games. And every NFL scout of every NFL team is there. Um, it's really important because it helps um, put – yourself up against NFL talent and people have their draft status has gone up a ton from the senior bowl and people's draft status has gone down from the senior bowl. Um, I remember when Justin Herbert was in the senior bowl, I'm pretty sure he won senior bowl MVP. And you guys know um, Justin Herbert went in the first round of the draft top 10 um, to the chargers and is now one of the best quarterbacks in the league. So the senior bowl is really important and to have players on that watch list is really important also because it shows that you have um, NFL talent and real talent that the NFL is looking at. And the Terps did not disappoint. They have seven players on the Senior Bowl watch list. I want to tell you some other names that have been um, at the Senior Bowl. Like I said, Justin Herbert, and then Phillip Rivers, LaDainian Tomlinson, and Dan Marino, and many more NFL players have been on the Senior Bowl. In 2022, I want to read this stat. 106 senior bowl players got drafted. That was a record. So they're not going to be like the first, second round guys. A lot of those guys aren't going to be the senior bowl guys. There's going to be a lot of guys that leave early, junior year, whatever, um, or just uber talented guys. But the senior bowl is made up of, of a lot of guys that are going to go in the fourth to the seventh round. Um, obviously, there's guys that go below that that attend the senior bowl, but it's a lot of guys that go between the fourth and the seventh round. Really good players. Um, but like I said, we had seven players on the watch list. I want to get into each one, starting with Gottlieb Ayizde, the transfer offensive lineman from Frostburg State, who's expected to start at right tackle. I've talked about him a good bit when talking about the offensive line. Um, but I ranked him as the fifth most important player in the offense. But I think it's really impressive. He hasn't played a stat for Maryland yet. He hasn't played at all for Maryland yet. So for him to be on this watch list coming from Frostburg State, I kind of wonder how good of a player he is because obviously we we have high hopes for him as being a good player, but he might be better than what we expect. If he's a senior bowl invite coming from Frostburg, that's not an easy thing to do, but we absolutely need a big year for him to um take the next step for the offensive line because obviously we replaced four um, – Starters from last year, which I've talked about a lot, but Gottlieb being on that watch list is really cool for him. It's a really cool thing, um, especially coming from Frostburg State. So I'm really excited to watch him play. He's going to be one of the main people I watched in the first um, couple of games, especially looking at the Big Ten, our first Big Ten game, um, because I want to see how well he plays um, against Big Ten talent and if he's really that guy, um, honestly, like if he's really that type of player. So I'm excited to see what Gottlieb does. But the next player on the list is Bo Braid. Um, Bo Braid. So I was looking around at some draft network and some sites and like safety rankings for the upcoming draft ranking. And Pro Football Network already had him ranked as the number five highest ranked safety in the coming draft. Um, so this is a big year for him. He can put himself in the first four rounds of the NFL draft. And we need him to be that type of player for this year. We need him to be that type of leader. We need him to um, bring that just type of all Big Ten NFL talent to um, the Maryland Terrapins this year. If our defense wants to be a top 25 defense, if if you guys think that's possible, I think it can happen. We have a ton of talent on the defense, especially in the secondary um, we have one of their best linebacker talents ever. And it's really going to come down to the defensive line, defensive edge group, and defensive tackle group, how well they play. But in terms of the secondary, um, there's other players in the secondary that are on this list. But Bo Bray could solidify himself. And I actually want to read this quick quote from Pro Football Network that they said about Bo Braid being um, their top five safety in the draft. They said not only is Braid explosive, productive, and versatile, but his brand of mobility and, and he's twitched up high energy and free flowing is extremely translatable to the NFL. So high praise for Bo there. Um, it's good to see him getting on or getting um, projected to go in the draft because 
Obviously, we like to get our guys drafted. That's how you take the next step of this program. That's how you get recruits to want to come. But he, I know he's worked his tail off. Um, I've heard about it on his podcast. He has a podcast with Dante Trader, One Speed Podcast. Um, they talk about how they only go one speed all the time. So that's what Bo's doing. And I can't wait to see how he plays this year. And I'm hoping he can help us bring down one of the big three in Penn State, Michigan, or Ohio State. But the next player on this list is Maryland tight end Corey Deitches. Um, So Deitches is a really intriguing player because of his ability at the tight end position and the speed that he has. Obviously, he's a little bit undersized for the tight end position, but he's kind of that hybrid of tight end wide receiver. But I think Corey Deitches is kind of underrated, Obvious, honestly. He's the kind of player that NFL – um that the NFL loves. Like, they love those guys that are high-speed guys at the tight end position. Um, Actually, he reminds me, he is exactly like, which is just a big coincidence, former Maryland tight end, Chigo Quanco. I don't know if people have made that comparison. I haven't heard it a ton. Maybe it has been made. But he is the exact same player. Chig is expected to be um the Titans' tight end one this year. Um, Chang made a couple of really big plays last year, but this year he's expected to be the, t- the tight end one for the Titans. But they're the same body types, same speed. Chang's like 6'3". Corey Deitches is listed at 6'2". He doesn't um, offer the tallest guy on the field at the tight end position, but he can run and he can separate. Linebackers can't st- stay with him, and that's why I'm hoping he can make a couple of game-changing plays and – He's going to be Talia's, one of Talia's favorite targets. He was top five in receiving yards for our team last year. Um, with C.J. Dupree being there and with all the NFL talent at wide receiver. But, of course, C.J. Dupree is off to Alabama. So it's Corey Deitch's room. And I expect a big year for him. And he could really um, met himself into a really solid player, I think, in terms of draft status. Because of, I think they really like those guys, but he is really similar to Chig, so it'll all be it'll be interesting to see what he does in terms of this year. But I'm expecting a big year from Corey Deitches. Um, we just have a talent ton of talent. I don't want to rant about it too much because I've talked about it a lot, but we have a ton of talent at the skill position groups, um, and at the tight end position. So if we if the offensive line can give those guys time, then Talia is going to be dealing. We have too many, we have too many good players on the outside and at the running back position um, for Talia not to play well if the offensive line is playing well. So I will tell you about the rest of the players on this watch list after this quick break. I want to tell you guys to make sure to check out the two part. Ultimate College Football Preview. It is available on Locked On Big Ten. Make sure to go check it out. I talked about what um, the Maryland team, what I expect from them, how many wins I think we can get. So go check that out on Locked On Big Ten. Search it up on YouTube. Um, All the Locked On channels, Ohio State, Michigan, Indiana, whoever, they're all talking about what they expect this year. Um. And they also give a sleeper team for this year. So go check out that on the Locked On Big Ten stream. All right, let's go back into it. And so the next player on the list is Delmar Glaze. I ranked him as the second most important player on the offense. Um, Our only returning offensive lineman. He's already could have gotten drafted last year. He should be one of... I think he's like kind of an automatic for the senior bowl. He's that kind of player. He's too good not to be make the senior bowl and play at a high level and get drafted at a high level. I'm expecting him to take an even bigger step. He was the seventh rated highest tackle on PFF last year. Um, so Delmar Glaze definitely deserves it. Um, we're going to need him to be a really good player, him and Gottlieb at both edge spots. I kind of like how the offensive line that are too – I'm not going to say our best players. Delmar Glaze is for sure our best player. Gottlieb, I still have to prove that. But two of our, maybe our best players are at tackle position, um, the most important position on the offensive line. So 
I think that's really important that we have Delmar Glaze, but he can he is one of the best tackles in the whole country. So I'm expecting a big year for him. And that uh, and then we can move on to the secondary again. And Jaquan Shepard transfer from Cincinnati. I haven't talked about Jaquan a lot. Um but he's new to the Maryland program, like I said, transfer from Cincinnati. But he's our number one cornerback outside. He has a chance to prove himself against some of the best wide receivers in the country. He was a stud at Cincinnati. Like, he was making a ton of plays. Watch the YouTube um, highlight. I watched it a couple times. I also just checked out a couple Cincinnati games, um, replays from last year to see what it was, he was about. Really good player, physical player. Brings energy, and he's already a senior bowl invite or a senior bowl watch list invite. Um, and I expect him to take that leap and be an NFL player. Um, people have been talking about in the broadcast. They talked about it on the spring game broadcast that he has a chance to be the next one in line in terms of the Jacory Bennett, um, Deontay Banks that just left. He is the, the next one to be the next quarterback in line. And so I hope we start that kind of line of players where we keep banging out NFL type players in the secondary. We're kind of doing it in the at the wide receiver position, but we're kind of starting to do it in the secondary. If you look at Nick Cross safety got drafted a couple of years back. Deontay Banks won the first round last year. Jaquarian Bennett went in the fourth round. Um Jaquan Shepard has a chance to go in the NFL draft. Um right now he will um, but a bad season can change everything, of course, but a good season can change everything for the better. So right now, he is an NFL type of guy. Um, but if he continues to prove himself, he could even go um, improve his draft stock. Um, so we'll see what he can do. And then we go on to another player in the secondary. This is what I mean, our secondary stack. I have so much confidence in those guys to lock up the Big Ten's um, Best. That's why part of why I think we match up really well with Ohio State because we can cover those dudes on the outside. I mean, I'm not going to act like we're going to like stop them, but we can slow them down. And Marvin Harrison and Mecca and Buka, Julian Fleming, they got brought in freshmen like Cornell Tate, Brandon Innes, whoever. We have a cornerback group that might be able to slow those guys down a little bit. I know they have a ton of highly talented guys. And they just have straight dudes and NFL first round type of players. But the next player is Tarheeb Still. I think Tarheeb's game translates really well to the NFL's game because the NFL is looking for slot corners. And a nickel defense is what um, the NFL is trending towards. You just have to have a guy in the slot that can cover. Um, you can't run as many. Um, Defenses without a nickel back and only two cornerbacks and two safeties with many linebackers on the field. The game's just too fast for that now. And so Tarheeb's game and his versatility, being able to move outside, move in the slot, I think translates well. If you remember, Tarheeb played so well as a freshman, freshman All-American. But does he have a chance to continue in that line as a player that um, is in the secondary, like Jaquan Shepard, like I said about Jaquan Shepard and follow up Deontay Banks? Um, and Ja'Cory Bennett, Nick Cross, and Bo Braid has a chance too. So we have many dudes in the secondary that have a chance to get drafted this year. Um, so I'm excited to see what they can do and if they can solidify themselves as a player that can get drafted. And the last player on the list is, of course, Talia. Came back for his final year. I hope it pays off. It should with a really good year. He has a chance to solidify himself as a – as a mid-round draft pick, I'm talking third, fourth, fifth, sixth round type of guy. Um, Talia's um, NFL talent is interesting because if he was 6'3 with a bigger arm, he might have been like a first two-round type of guy. But he's not. He's 5'10", and he doesn't have the biggest arm. He doesn't have NFL traits. But that's all right because he's still one of – he's still the best Maryland quarterback of all time um, at his size. But – in terms of him being a senior bowl invite, I think he's one of those guys that could just impress at the senior bowl. Um, but I'm not surprised at all. I expect him to be an NFL player. He can be like a long-term NFL backup. I'm not going to sit here and act like he has the starter ability at the NFL level because just what the NFL looks for and what they kind of like at the position 
and the size they look at. Bryce Young's six feet, um, not a lot of weight. A ton of people talked about that in the draft prospect draft. Um, all the draft NFL draft stuff from this last year or this last draft. So Talia kind of compares in terms of that in ways, but I think people won't be as afraid to draft him in later rounds and just be a solid backup for a while. Maybe he'll back up his brother. Who knows? So um, I'm not surprised at all that Talia is on this list. Um, I would expect him to be on this list, and a big year can really help. But what does this mean exactly, having seven players on the senior bowl list? It means we're producing NFL talent. I was scrolling through um, earlier all the guys that are on the senior bowl list in the schools and teams like Michigan's and Alabama's. Oh, my gosh. You would think their whole senior class basically – or their whole senior class basically is on those lists. So just having a bunch of dudes, having seven players on the list, shows where we're going as a program, shows that we're starting to take the turn into having a bunch of NFL talent – we're not, we don't have like the first or second round guys yet, but we have a good amount of um, fourth, fifth, third round guys, I think, on this team. And that's how you kind of build up a team, just having depth at positions and having different players. But it's really, it's really cool to see a ton of our guys get picked for the senior bowl. But that's all for today. Again, I'm sorry about my voice. I still want to make an episode, so I want to get this out to you guys. But please like and subscribe. We're here every day, and the college football season is coming soon. See you next time. Bye.